Hey everyone. So I thought we'd do kind of a mini series where I go over something that, that I did with ML.net using this app that I use called ClickUp. Now ClickUp is a really nice project management tool and I use it to keep track of uh, the videos that I want to do plus some other stuff. Uh, we also did the virtual ML.net community conference, uh, use that to help kind of organize that. And so here's kind of a, what mine looks like, and you get a bit of a sneak peek of what I'm working on next as well. It's really nice here, and what I want to pay attention to here is these, these tags here. So I thought, man, it would be cool if we can kind of automate adding these tags to new tasks. Well, it turns out they have a really nice API. So they have, you can get, get all the tasks. We can, we can create a webhook where a task is created. We can run something. And then they have a tag API where we add a tag to a task. So I thought we can use ML.NET to create a model and then run that model with the webhook to automatically add a tag to it. Now the first thing we need to do is to actually get the data that we can use in for our training. So I showed earlier we can get our tasks here and that task will give us, you know, it gives us the names of the task. So I figure we can get the names of the task and it should give us the tags as well. So we get the name and the tags and we can use that data to create a ML.NET model. So let's get started. But let's see, real quick. Also, the first thing we need to do is we need to generate a, an API key from ClickUp. So I'll go to my app section and my settings. There we go. In the apps and we have an API token and I will be regenerating this before the video goes out so it can be used again so we have that and I added that to as I added that as an environment variable so we can check that real quick so we can do system dot environment and I'm using PowerShell here let's get environment variable uh, click up API key and that's in the user setting. And there we go, we have that. Let's go into Visual Studio here, and we create a new project. It's gonna be a console app for right now. I'm just gonna call it ClickUp. So this solution is ClickUp. I should have called the project ClickUp data, but that's okay. First thing, let's get that API key from the environment variable using environment. That, let me open this up a little bit, there you go get environment variable so click click up API key and it's an variable variable target of user and since we're calling API let's create a new HTTP client and to that client we'll add a base address the new URI and we'll be referencing these docs here so the base address Switch to the console here. There you go. API.clickup.com slash API and version two. And then for our default header, this is where we need to add that API key to authorize ourselves to the API. It'll be an authorization header. And we'll send it to that API key. The way the hierarchy in ClickUp to get the tasks it's the main thing is uh, you have a, a team, which is the, everything here. Then it, within a team, you have a space. So I have my space here. Within the space, we have a folder. And then with the folder is we have the list of tasks. And the documentation, we could go from the, t get the team to the space, because we're using IDs here, to the folder, then to the list, and then from the list ID, you get the task. But it does seem like, and that's kind of what I did uh, when I first messed with this. But it turns out that if I go into this list here, then that list ID is in the URL. So I'll just take that, and then from there, I can just call client get async. And this is going to be, let's double check this API call here. So get tasks, it's gonna be the list with the task name slash task. So list, 
with the list ID and then task. Then we can add some other stuff here. Uh, archived equals false. And there's some other parameters that I want to do. Include closed. I want to include closed so I can get everything. Archived equals false. And include closed equals true. And this is awaitable. So we can change our main method to be async and return a task. All right, so we have that call. We can get the content by await on that call, get the content, and then read a string async. Now we have a string of that task content. And what we can do is, so we can deserialize this JSON string into an object. To do that, let's bring down the Microsoft system.txt.json and it will be JSON serializer that deserialize into a task object or tasks object and pass in that content string. So create that file. Right in here we have a couple of properties or, or just one property in here. And it's gonna be a list of a task object and I'll call it a tasks list and then I'm going to put a JSON property name just to make sure it gets parsed out correctly and that's going to be a task property on the JSON string and then uh, actually it should be task not tasks there we go now we we don't want to confuse it with system not threading that tasks uh, we want to create our own task object here. A couple of properties. First is going to be the one uh, task ID. Then the task name. And then we want a list of the tags. Yep. Create this tag object real quick. And we add our JSON property name attributes. That's going to be ID. And then in our tag object, we just have one property in here. It's going to be a string called name for a tag name. And then set the JSON property name as name. So we have that. And you know what? Let's go ahead and run this, make sure everything works okay. I've got an error here task object instead of system that threading that task. So I'll just use system that threading that task. I specify that um, uh, that task that task. I'll explicitly use the fully qualified name for that. If I did better naming then that wouldn't be an issue. That's a okay, let's run this. Alright so we got some content here. So make sure your serialize is okay. 77 tasks. There we go. And there we go. We got our our name and our tag that we want here. Let's see, I think some of them some of these might have yet yeah, some of these might have more than one tag. I'll probably just get the first tag to make it simpler. Alright, so we have our data. Now we just need to get it into I'm I'm just going to put it into a CSV file so we can use that within our Arlo ML project. And what, to make that simpler, I'm going to bring down another package here. It's going to be CSV helper. Good. And to use this, use a couple of using statements. So var writer, create a new stream writer, and we need a do a CSV path where we want to save that to. I'll do that up here. So var CSV path will be path dot combine, and I'm going to do environment dot get folder path, and it's going to be a special folder. It's going to be put in my documents, and I'll give it task dot CSV. So it'll be in my documents with a file called task dot CSV. And under 
here we can do an, we can chain these using statements by the way instead of nesting them we can just chain them like this so bar csv new csv writer pass in the stream writer here and then we'll say the culture info is in very culture oh. all right and then here we can do csv dot write records and it's going to write based on whatever the whatever is in the object and because we have some nesting objects here with uh, some lists and all that i'm going to create a new object and call it csv data and then up here we'll create a new object here where i'll use task dot task list and i'm going to select from each one of those and then for each task i'm going to create a new csv data item now let's go ahead and create this and here i just want to do a couple of properties do the task name and then the tag so here task name is going to be t.name and then here we do t.tags.select and we'll select the tag name and we get the first or default item here there we go let's run this and see what we get there we go so that ran uh, no issues let's make sure got a file let's look at the file here all right nice we got task names here and we got our tags and so now some of these are empty because i wasn't very good at <laughs> doing these tags uh, earlier on so i can backfill these let's see some of these i'm not going to bother with okay that should be okay uh, we're going to leave these blank uh, because mo.net or auto ml doesn't really care if these are blank so we'll just leave it as is and uh, I'll, end, I'll end things there in our next video we'll use this data to create an ml.net model using auto ml to predict based on the task name what tag it should be so hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time thanks